April 28th, 29th, and 30th. Save the date. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Zack Snyder released a new Justice League Dark Side trailer video teasing something really big. A lot of people had questions about it. So this will be my breakdown video explaining what's going on, what he's teasing, and a lot of the connections with the upcoming movies and what's happening with the big James Gunn reboot. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll do videos for everything that winds up happening. We have Shazam! Fury of the Gods coming out. I have a post credit scene video that'll post really soon for that too. A lot of people wondering what's going on because there's so much chaos and then Zack Snyder comes out and drops this big dark side trailer like, surprise, Lord Darkseid says, be prepared. Something is coming. You probably recognize the dark side voiceover in the trailer. It's the voice of Ray Porter who voices Darkseid in the Justice League Snyder Cut doing a new promo for Zack Snyder's teaser for this big event that's happening in April. Anti-life is found to sod, and we will stop at nothing to possess it. When he dropped the trailer on his Twitter, he used the hashtag full circle. It's meant to be a reference to him starting the DCEU, like this whole big thing with the Man of Steel movie, because you probably guess April 28th to the 30th is three days. What this is probably a teaser for is a new Snyder Con where he'll screen each of his three DC movies each of the days, like Man of Steel, then he'll do the Batman v Superman Ultimate Cut, and then he'll do the Justice League Snyder Cut on the last day doing new commentary for the movies during the watch along. He's done this before in the past, the same old thing where he shows off concept art. He talks about deleted scenes, extra things that weren't released on DVDs and Blu-rays. Let's, uh, let's turn the camera. Ding, 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 ding. A lot of Barbie movies I see. Yeah, it's my secret passion. The kids also use this. Oh, there it is. So when he does these, you do learn a lot of cool new things about the movies behind the scenes stuff. He releases a lot of deleted scenes too. Publicly, what Warner Brothers and James Gunn have said about the big reboot that he's doing with the DCU is they're calling it the DCU now to begin with. This is like the giant list of projects and how everything fits in. Some of it will be considered genuine Elseworlds like the Matt Reeves Batman movies with Robert Pattinson. And then there'll be the connected DCU universe where all the recasting stuff is happening. According to James Gunn, that will start with the Flash movie. So like Shazam! Fury of the Gods is coming out as of me posting this video. Technically, that's meant to be inside the DCEU, but they have loose connections to the DCU in a way that's ambiguous enough that they could say the characters could come back, even though I expect there to be a lot of recasting with the Shazam! characters. When we get to the Flash movie, that's still DCEU, but the events of that movie will set up a reboot into the DCU. Like the Flash will be messing with things Flashpoint style. It's based on the Flashpoint storyline with a bunch of changes. The way he talks about the Blue Beetle movie that's coming out later this year is that it's kind of set off by itself. It's ambiguous enough that they can say it is connected to the new DCU and it won't cause any big continuity problems. But the actual beginning of all these recastings, the DCU itself, James Gunn views as being the Superman legacy movie, which he has now announced that he's directing, like he's writing and directing it. It'll be a new version of Superman that's younger. It's like a Superman year two movie, kind of like the way Matt Reeves did Batman year two in the Batman movie. Henry Cavill did say that there was potential he could come back eventually as Superman, but I think we're talking Crisis on Infinite Earths multiverse stuff way down the road. Speaking of deleted scenes, we do know Once Upon a Time Zack Snyder planned on doing a trilogy of Justice League movies. But what happened is, is way back in December 2015, Jim Lee said that Zack Snyder brought him onto the project to draw up these giant like 10 foot tall storyboards with the pitch for Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 to convince the studio to spend the money to make all three movies. But what I'll do is I'll just read what the story is and talk about where this all fits in. So he starts by saying, although originally pitched as one film, we believe the character arcs of our heroes and villains along with the epic battle with Darkseid, which unites the League, the world, and the entire DC Universe warrants two films, instead of just doing one sequel. He goes on to say, however, this does not mean that you have two films centered on Darkseid's invasion. Rather, Justice League 2 would be a very grounded, personal, and character-driven film that would follow the Justice League both together and separately as they mend old wounds on the road to becoming better and stronger heroes. While Lex Luthor recruits a league of his own, the Injustice League, made up of revenge-driven villains introduced in the hero solo films, Dr. Maru from Wonder Woman 2. That was actually Dr. Poison. I think originally in Zack Snyder's idea, they would have introduced Dr. Poison in a bigger way during the sequel to Wonder Woman. Captain Cold from the Flash movie, Orm and Black Manta from the Aquaman movie, and the Riddler from Ben Affleck's version of the Batman movie. 
these villains would link all of the DC films together. Now remember, this is back in 2015, so it's the original version of the spin-off films. Those wound up changing a little bit, like the Aquaman movie changed a little bit, the Flash Flashpoint movie has changed a little bit, the Wonder Woman movies have changed a little bit. Then he goes on to say, like Empire Strikes Back in the last Harry Potter film, Justice League 2 would end with a cliffhanger, revealing only at the end of the film Lex and his league are connected to Darkseid, then flash forwarding five years into the future where Darkseid has taken Earth. That's basically the nightmare future that we see at the end of the Justice League Snyder Cut. Then he goes on to describe the hero's arcs through parts 2 and 2a. With Lois's help, the back from the dead Superman will learn to become Clark Kent again, feeling more human than ever, he and Lois start a family. Remember how they teased Lois was pregnant? Wonder Woman would reconnect with the Amazons and her mother, eventually becoming their new queen and rejoining these isolationist warriors with the outside world, meaning connecting Themyscira with the outside world. Aquaman, with the help of Mira, will bring the Seven Kingdoms together, Seven Kingdoms of Atlantis originally, becoming the one true king, building a new alliance between the oceans and the surface. That was what the whole Unite the Seven tagline was about, unite the seven kingdoms of Atlantis before Atlantis sank into the ocean. The Flash will free himself from the past, releasing his father from prison with Cyborg's help and learning how to master his time-traveling abilities, literally becoming able to be in two places at once. Cyborg will evolve both into the modern-day god of the digital age and into a human once again, and Batman will ultimately sacrifice his life for the unlikely friends and the woman he loves, leaving behind a legacy that will never truly die. But he starts with the plot of Justice League 2 by saying, The Justice League United, we open with the Justice League in action during a natural disaster working as the efficient powerful team they become weeks after the first Justice League movie ends. They act together, they save lives. In the aftermath, the Justice League return at the only headquarters they know, the Batcave. Bruce secretly meets with Lois, both of them still searching for Lex Luthor. The meeting ends after Lois tells Bruce that Superman needs her more than ever. Bruce knows Lois is hiding something else probably the pregnancy. He was going to set up this whole Batman-Lois Lane romance through the sequels that would play out. Then he talks about Lex Luthor recruiting the Injustice League. Meanwhile, deep in the Brazilian jungle, Lex locates Dr. Maru, that's Dr. Poison from the Wonder Woman movie. Outside of Central City in Iron Heights Penitentiary, Lex finds Leonard Snart, Captain Cold, where he was left at the end of the Flash movie, or where he would have been left at the end of the Flash movie, and offers him a chance to advance his weaponry and take down the fastest man alive, upgrade his cold gun with alien technology. Then there's this whole sequence with them intercutting between the Injustice League and the Justice League characters. In Metropolis, Superman asks Lois Lane what she was going to tell him as he hears the second heartbeat inside of her. Then as the lasso of truth is giving Diana all these visions, she suddenly sees a vision of herself as a dark Diana, as the goddess of war. Battling with Superman, she kills him. This is probably another vision of a potential nightmare future. Then as Batman returns from the wilderness back to the Batcave and Alfred, they reveal that Lex Luthor has found all three mother boxes. Then at the Three Rivers Dam, helicopters survey the area as Lex is on the scene and activates all three mother boxes. His true plan to destroy the Justice League and take the power of the anti-life equation for his own. Then as the three mother boxes are coming together and Lex Luthor thinks that he's achieved his goal, a boom tube opens, Darkseid and Desaad step out. As you would expect, Darkseid promptly takes the power of the anti-life equation for himself. Then back at the site of the battle, Lex Luthor reveals Darkseid has the power to kill Superman and Darkseid acknowledges him and says, I don't want to kill him, I want him to submit. So that sort of explains why you have this evil Superman in the Nightmare timelines. Then back in the Batcave, Batman finds out what's happened with Darkseid killing Lois Lane. Superman turns on him immediately, becomes evil Superman and tries to kill Batman. Then just as Lex Luthor is basking in his victory over the Justice League, evil Superman shows up and burns him on the spot, and they sort of cut to black the transition as Lex Luthor starts screaming and gets lit on fire. Then they cut to five years later, and you're in the nightmare future, like everything is a wasteland on Earth. Like Batman is taking the survivors to the Batcave, or where the Batcave used to be. Then we meet a new Green Lantern. It's implied that it's Kilwag, the dead Green Lantern from Cyborg's vision that the Mother Boxes gave him. But this is him when he's first showing up to planet Earth. His ship is crashing and he's trying to contact someone from the Justice League, but no one's picking up. Batman finds him and saves him from the rubble of the ship. Flash shows up, helps them destroy the rest of the Parademons. Then Green Lantern explains what's been happening in the rest of the universe with Darkseid and the Anti-Life Equation, how he's paving his way, conquering the universe. 
Cyborg then reveals that he's created the cosmic treadmill from the comics that Flash is going to use to time travel. But Batman's plan is word Flash travels back in time and is correctly able to warn Batman at the right point in time and place to save Lois Lane. Then in present day, Darkseid starts a full-scale invasion of Earth with his fleet like he talks about at the end of the Snyder Cut and they have their version of the Avengers Endgame final battle on Earth with pretty much every character from the DC Universe you've ever heard of coming back. And the way they end things seems very similar to the Iron Man Avengers Endgame ending with him sacrificing himself to snap the Infinity Gauntlet. Batman winds up sacrificing himself to land the killing blow on Darkseid and destroy him completely. Then in the aftermath, Lois Lane eventually gives birth to her child. They name it Bruce Kent after Bruce Wayne in honor of his sacrifice. But remember, she's with Superman. He doesn't have any power, so he doesn't become Superboy or anything like that. But in 20 years, there's this ceremony where Commissioner Barbara Gordon is honoring Batman's sacrifice 20 years before. She tells Lois, when are you going to tell him, looking at her son, that the secret she'd been keeping this whole time is that her son, Bruce Kent, was secretly Bruce Wayne's child. As Batman's true son, he winds up taking up the mantle of the next Batman. Don't know how everybody feels about that, Lois Lane giving birth to Batman's child. One of the spiciest things I've ever heard of them doing in a DC movie. Then the moment you go out on in Justice League 3, like the epilogue or the post credit scene, you see a shot of Bruce Kent in the cape and cowl rising from the shadows in Gotham with a bat signal shining in the sky. There was talk a long time ago about him doing his Justice League sequels, but as a comic book with Jim Lee, it's always possible that could wind up happening, but I'm not going to hold my breath on it. Let me know in the comments. They bring all those actors back in many years for like a big Crisis on Infinite Earths movie with a bunch of multiverse crossovers. What do you want the actual story to be? Do you want it to just be Crisis on Infinite Earths or do you want them to try and do something else? My Shazam! Fury of the Gods post credit scene video will post next. You can click here to watch that. I'll update the link as soon as I post it. And click here for my Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.